This is Hans Scheil from the Finishing Well podcast. On Finishing Well, we help you make godly choices about Medicare, long-term care, and your money. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just seconds. Enjoy it. Share it. But most of all, thank you for listening and choosing the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. Coming to you from an entrenched barricade deep in the heart of central North Carolina. Masculine journey after hours. A time to go deeper and be more transparent on the topic covered on this week's broadcast. So sit back and join us on this adventure. The masculine journey after hours starts here now. We are on a quest for laughter today with what makes you laugh. It was a topic brought up by our good friend Kenny. And so we're now going to go after hours on you and go deeper, deeper into laughter. Mm. 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 Only the shadow knows. <laughs> <laughs> How deep can you go into laughter? I mean, well, that, laugh that, that, from the diaphragm. From the diaphragm, okay. Uh, a while ago, he was somebody was slapping Alice in the bad hat, or yeah. so they were pretty deep down the rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah not, but anyway, it was your topic. What was going on with that, Kenny? Uh, well, like I said, I've been out for a while, and coming back, it was refreshing to be around brothers in Christ laughing with each other picking on each other yes but laughing at each other not the world a lot of time they're laughing at they're coming from the wrong angles tearing people down and laughing at it it's almost a mockery uh, of, of it or getting into things they shouldn't be laughing about but that's what I love about this group it's it's refreshing laughter if you know one thing we was talking about uh I ain't gonna take the punchline, but I, I like that clip that's coming up. Maybe, I, maybe, cause uh, do we look for that punchline? You know, I got to thinking about that when we was talking about during the break. Do we look for what? What's what's putting a smile or laugh in God's? I know a lot of things shenanigans we all do. He's got to say, yeah, <laughs> check, check, check him out, man. <laughs> check <his out. laughs> the angels got to have a sense of humor too. So, <laughs> yeah, because they they minister to us. They, uh, you got you got the clown again today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the semanticas they start, it got going and all, but you know, and hopefully the ministering spirits enjoy our presence, right? You know, as much as we need theirs. You know, because uh, that's one thing that a lot of people miss was how the angels minister to Christ during different things and challenges in his life. You know, but it, they, they had to be watching as some of the shenanigans going on with him and mm. the apostles. You know, he's talking about Peter, mm. you know, uh, doing the sunbathing and all, and then just putting, it, putting his cloak on to drop in the water. And they they got to say, what's this guy doing? You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny stuff. <laughs> so speaking of water, we you know, we've got a clip here by me. You know, okay. can anybody that knows me, if you know, yeah. if the question before us was what makes you laugh? And, and so what I thought personally was always made me laugh. Apparently made my grandfather laugh before me and my father laugh before me because I knew them both, you know, to use puns constantly. And they they would go on these pun fest where, you know, you'd see how many <laughs> puns you could make on any given word. And they would, you know, if you just brought up the word corn, I mean, it was on. You better have ears to hear and, you know, not have a husky voice and all sorts of things that was coming at you, right? And, and so we used to go to Disney World often, and I love, love, love the Jungle Cruise. Wow. And if you're ever on the Jungle Cruise, you know, one of the very unique things about it is that they tell these amazing puns throughout the cruise that made me laugh the, the, the entire time and the, of course the crescendo the, the big moment of the whole jungle cruise for those of you who have ever been on it is when they take you through the waterfall into the like dark cave and then they turn you around and they go the back side of water <laughs> which for me has just always you know the whole absurdity I guess whatever you want to say it it's just absolutely hilarious but when you think about that idea of the backside of water which we are going to get to clip in a second mm. is that water equals Jesus I mean in, 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 so the whole idea of a pun is a double entendre right that, that, that one thing means a lot of things well the word Jesus itself is equal to 
the word of God. It is equal to water. It is equal to the bread of life. It, it is equal to the truth. It is equal to the life. In other words, almost anything of any value, because apart from me, you can do what? Nothing. Uh, what? It's, 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 so it's like a double, triple, quadruple. It's the backside of water. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the whole idea of this is more than hilarious, as is this particular clip, in my opinion. If you look to the left of the boat, you'll see some very playful toucans. They're playing their favorite game of beak wrestling. The only drawback is only two can play. There's two birds and those are toucans and saying there's only two can play. Not one, but two can play. The rocks you see here in the river are sandstone, but some people just take them for granted. It's one of my bolder attractions. <laughs> you know, before this, I used to work in an orange juice factory, but I got canned. Couldn't concentrate. Yeah, they put the squeeze on me, too. That's a good one. I should have opened with that one. You know, they say the boa constrictor right there is capable of eating up to 500 pounds per sitting. Personally, I find that very hard to swallow. Mommy, can you please make him stop? No one can. And don't interrupt me like that again. I will feed you to the boa. She is a small child. You love small children. <laughs> Close your mouth. Hey, McGregor. I had a girlfriend once. She was cross-eyed. Didn't work out. We could never see eye to eye. <laughs> it's not your idea of a joke. That is not funny. I'm also quite sure she was seeing somebody on the side. <laughs> I hope you know what you're getting yourself into here, Frank. A car. Oh, your jokes. They will be the death of me. They are absolutely exhausting. Wow, Lily. Did you like it? It was good. <laughs> are you yeah. proud? The backside of water. <laughs> and if you could have been with me, you know, my whole family, of course, took me to go see the Jungle Cruise. And, you know, my granddaughter, everybody knows my affinity for the backside of water has been for years. And so when that scene happens, which is really, you know, spoiler alert, you need to go watch this movie. OK, but when, you know, the big, big moments happen and they're going to find the, the fountain of youth and all this stuff, they go through this waterfall <laughs> And when they get on the other side of it, this German guy's trying to kill him all this stuff, and he goes, the backside of water. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely spectacular, you know, when you when you think about it. And so I, I do love to laugh. People know me well. And it's interesting to me, I was thinking about it, that interestingly, God will give you something at a particular moment mm. where people are freaking out, and you can cause them to laugh. So this is Sam, the story south, stand, st- starts out kind of difficult, but it gets funny that when I got crushed by the Jeep, <laughs> so I'm standing back there, this poor guy left his car out of gear and it runs down the hill and crushes me. And then it was almost taken off my left leg actually. And so I believe you were the poor guy, not him. Well, he felt horrible. Yeah, I'm sure. I had Jesus. <laughs> no legs, but Jesus. <laughs> and painkillers a little uh, bit later. Uh, he was the painkiller. I'm telling you, he was, man. Because I remember crying out. And I, that literally, this true story that when they brought the morphine finally, you know, it took about an hour to get the ambulance in there. I didn't feel anything different than I was already feeling. I was like, I'm, I, I really was not in pain. Um, I don't understand it, but I don't have to. But nonetheless, so I'm, everybody's freaking out that I'm going to go into shock because I'm hurt really, really bad and they can't get the ambulance up there. or They, they can't fly in anything because of the weather. It's way up in the mountains. And um, the guy is standing over me that hit me. And this is why I say the poor guy, because he is literally losing it. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, he's in my face. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> right? And I don't know. It, God had to give me this line because it was a punchline, which we'll talk about here in a minute. He had to give it to me because I just looked up at him and I said, dude, man, how's your insurance? <laughs> 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 and immediately, you know, what he, it just lightened up the whole deal. It's like God just used that punchlines, as it were, to just, you know, 
the backside of water. It, it, it took the whole thing. And of course, it's always been a punchline for me. The whole issue is that I just remember yeah. that like here I was at this moment that and, and God gives you a joke to share. Mm-hmm. And Danny, you know, you could appreciate that, right? You know, like at the right moment to have the right line is, is just a wonderful feeling. I wasn't crushed by a Jeep, but I got hit by a microwave working one time and it, it literally run across my chest now is this the wave or it is it actually the machine that makes microwaves the mach- machine that makes microwaves <laughs> so you weren't hit by thunder you no, i was hit by, by <laughs> stored up electricity okay and when the secretary she heard me holler when it hit oh and so she comes back and i am on my knees in the florida shop and she goes are you okay and the only thing that could come to mind was don't bother me. My life is flashing for my eyes, and I like this part. <laughs> <laughs> what was that part? I don't remember what the part was. But yeah. I would like to know. Wouldn't yeah, you like right, to know? Yeah, Inquiring minds would like to know, Danny. What was that part? <laughs> it was shocking. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> this is after hours, so the warped people will think it's funny. Yeah. But I'm glad you got hit by a literal microwave machine. Because the first two guys that got hit by a microwave were fried. So, not funny. But Sigmund fried. He's a fraud. You mispronounced it. Oh, Is it? all right. So moving along. To, 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 so that must be the 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 that's all, folks. Kind of. <laughs> no, we're actually we're we're transitioning from the funny part of the show. <laughs> Put your serious down. <laughs> uh, no, actually. This part of it is, is, is really one of my favorite parts of this whole topic is, is really to see this whole thing in the light that you're going to share it. And I love the way you did it, Rodney. I really do. Okay. He's just trying to bump it up. No, he, he'd prefer a laugh track. <laughs> no, and, I would not. I, and, I, I want Rodney. I know who I know. And we, this is, and this, Rod- this is another Rodney. stand-up comedian that I happen to find. And I was like... Okay, what am I going to do for this topic? And I was just kind of pondering in my head, which was mostly about, well, how does God use humor? And he loves to, through the humor, tell a story. He makes his point by doing something. When you look at it, you're like, either usually you see the humor or you see the point. But you sometimes don't always get both until you reread it or somebody explains something that you didn't see. And that's part of the beauty of scripture, right? There's always more depth to it. But that's where I was. And then I just started looking for stuff and I came across this clip where it's Michael Jr. The clip is called More Than Funny. It's actually a TED Talk. So he's there to... So again, I know everybody seems to know what a TED Talk is, but I'm not familiar. What does that mean, TED Talk? They're usually just short educational Who's talks t- who's, on a vari- who, variety of subjects. Yeah, who's any t- subject. T- who's Ted? Uh, it's a, Nobody's met him. <laughs> I don't think it's named after. <laughs> He's a guy who talks. <laughs> I don't know if no. Ted means something it may an be acronym. Tech, tech or something. I don't something know if it's an acronym or what. Okay. Let me look it up. Uh, yeah, all right, you're, well, Dandy's well, our tech guru, so he he's supposed well, to know he's, us. Well, he's giving us an understanding yeah. of a TED talk because I just didn't. Yeah. You had said that earlier, and I meant to go TED talk. Okay. Yeah. I know. I don't listen to many at all, but I've never listened to one. This is my first. <laughs> and again, God and then Michael Jr. as a comedian loves to use humor and irony as a message. And I, that's where I found that clip. And I was like, he actually explains a little bit of that through here. And that's what I wanted to get capture and put into the clip was not just the humor. Are you waving at somebody? Or are you? I, okay. I have the answer. All right. So te- Give us TED, TED Talk. Talk is uh, technology, um, entertainment, and design. Is that, that's what it stands for. So it's just a conference that they have that people, people speak about those topics. So. Oh, it's a conference. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so Michael Jr. here in his TED Talk, what Andy just said, <laughs> uses his comedy here really just to set up and deliver a punchline that's something more than what's on the surface. And he uses the whole like 20 minutes or whatever it is to actually set it up, which is a little better than the 
you know, two minutes we can use here. But basically, he compares life to comedy and how a comedian will look at humor and delivering it through life. I like to explain to you how life works, at least from a comedian's perspective. First, there's a setup, and then there's a punchline. Your setup is your talents, your resources, and your opportunities. And most of the time, we use our setup to ensure that the people around us are moving in a direction that serves us, which means the punchline occurs when you change that direction in a way they're not expecting. You actually use your setup for other people. The results are the same, yet multiply. Revelation, fulfillment, and joy. But it's not just for the one receiving your punchline. It is absolutely for you as you deliver the punchline. In fact, if I ask the question to everyone here, everyone watching, if I ask you this question, um, how many people here know what your setup is? Every one of you would be able to tell me. Because your setup is the fact that you have a house, a car, you've been married, you went to school. Your setup is about what you've received. But what if I ask the question, what is your punchline? Because your punchline is about what you're called to deliver. And if you only know your setup and not your punchline, you'll make the mistake of trying to add more setup. If I could just get another degree, if I could just get married, if I could just lose weight. But what you really need is to know your punchline. Again, because to know your setup and not your punchline is an uncomfortable place to live. What about your story? You've been living it your entire life and if all you know is the setup and not the punchline, you are living in an uncomfortable place. And please be clear, just like when I had a hard time reading as a child, your setbacks are part of your setup so you can deliver the punchline you're called to deliver. Much like a slingshot, the further you've been set back, the further you're going to reach. But what are you gonna aim for? Everyone has a setup. And everyone has a punchline. You need to find your punchline and deliver it. I'm Michael Jr. I love you. So instead of being selfish, you're trying to be selfless. Think of others, put others first, the one another's and things of that nature, which I thought was very good message from him. I I don't listen to him a lot, but I've heard a few things and you know, he's pretty darn funny. I think Danny, you said you saw him in Nashville. Oh yeah, he's funny. Yeah. You know, he's Everything I've seen, I really like him a lot. And again, here, what I see is God. Think of each one of our lives. There's the setup. You thought you were going one direction, right? And then there's that punchline. And he's like, no, you're not the world's. You're mine. And at the moment it's happening, and usually there's a lot of different emotions. But after you look back on it, have you not just laughed and thought about your conversion moments or your period of time when that was happening and just kind of laughed? It's like, oh my gosh, what an idiot I was. What was going on in my life? And then wham, how fast it turns and goes in another direction. I mean, that's that's a setup and a punchline that is wonderful to see. And the story that I really wanted to talk about from the scripture was, First Samuel 4 and 5 kind of goes into the story where the, the Philistines defeat Israel because Israel is turning from God. And then you've got the Ark of the Covenant coming into the picture after they got defeated because they're like, oh, we're going to bring our good luck charm because that's how they treated God and the Ark. That's our charm. We're going we're gonna to beat the Philistines now. And there's a big uproar in the camp of the Israelites, and they're like, so happy and the Philistines hear all this and they feel it and they're like they're scared and they're like oh my gosh God has come into their camp you know what's going to happen then somebody steps up says no we got to be brave and go after this well the Philistines still beat Israel and what do they take they take the ark it's like oh look at that this like oh my gosh Israel is just defeated inflated you know they're just like oh this is horrible we lost the ark God is not with us anymore. And you've got the Philistines thinking, oh, this is the greatest thing. Oh, we're going to put the ark in there with our God. And that God's name was what? Dagon. I always get that confused. But they're going to put him with Dagon. And then Israel's being told about this big incident. And one of the things I thought was pretty interesting here is you've got Eli being told that, hey, the ark, there was this big fight, you know, the battle, and he's asking well, how the battle go, and it's like, oh, you, we lost the battle, 
and your sons, uh, Hophni and Phineas are both dead. And Eli's like, okay, yeah, he's listening. And then he goes, oh, when the ark was taken, that's what gets him. He knew his sons were up to a bunch of shenanigans. They were really bad people. And he falls off the back of a chair and he dies. I mean, that right there, you know, death isn't really funny, but you think about all the shenanigans going on and that's the way he goes down, finding out that, wow, all of this that's been going on in the land of Israel, that's what's going to kill him. Well, the next morning when the Philistines wake up, they go in to check on old Dagon, see how he's doing. He's bowed down prostrate to the ark. Oh, I'll be daggone. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is hilarious when it's like, well, what did the Philistines have to do? They had to go pick up their God and set him back up on the mantle or wherever he was at. And it's like, okay, we got our God back in where he's supposed to be. Well, they go out the next morning. Well, Dagon's back on the ground again, but this time he's without his head and without his hands. I just find that hilarious that here we are bound down to this God who can't even stay on the mantle. He just keeps falling down and bound down to the ark. Exactly. I mean, it's like, it's hilarious, but we do that all the time with our own gods. And then to, to further go on, it's like God's telling everybody through the message, I'm in control. The Philistines are like, well, if we do this and this and this, if it goes one way, their God's in it, Israel's God. If it goes another way, that's just by chance. So they're playing this whole game. So they hook up these milch cows, and these milch cows are never been yoked. If they're going to, first time they're getting yoked and getting all hooked up, they're going to buck, they're going to fight it, but they don't. And they're, they're just let go. And where do they go? They do not turn to the right. They do not turn to the left. They go directly to the city of Israel to take the ark back. They go exactly where God's directing them. And everybody gets the lesson of, yeah, it's pretty funny how Dagon bows down, but the seriousness of it is God's in charge. God's in control, and he's got everything under his power. And then I had to think about my own story. What was my own setup? And I was like, well, I would have said, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I've got these things, I do those things, and that would have been my story, my setup. But God's punchline is, nope, you're not married anymore, your kids, they've moved on from you and they're living their own lives and they're not in your house anymore. Yes, I'm still a father, but a lot of what I had said was my life, what I would have put all my hope and trust in not God, has completely changed now. It's like, okay, Lord, I got to trust in you. And he and I are the ones that commune and talk and relate to each other every single day and helps me to move through my life. So my identity is completely different. That punchline of, no, your identity is you're a child and you're my child. And I just love it. That's cool. I I love the punchline, and I do. I I really... It's okay, Robbie. You don't have to say anymore. It's okay. <laughs> I can't appreciate the fact that, the, you know, that it's really thought provoking, the whole idea. Because when you think of anybody's life, well, right, you they, love punchlines. I do. And I loved what he said, it, where he said, you get the joy out of delivering the punchline. Mm-hmm. It starts to be broader. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because your punchline makes you laugh more than anybody else. Because, Ask me. Anybody you usually knows. laugh before you deliver it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's coming. I know. Yeah, okay, here it comes. Laughing. Here it comes. As soon as he stops laughing, he's going to deliver it. All right. <laughs> when I heard your discussion of that and that clip, it brought a memory back to me real quick. And it was, uh, and anybody that's listened two or three times a show knows I, my wife and I love to cruise. And I was on a cruise. I had on my God shirt. I don't remember which one, but I usually am wearing those. And uh, I said hi to a guy, and he looked at my shirt, and he says, I'm Jewish. Like, you know, conversation ended. And God gave me the punchline on that one, said that I responded as, oh, it's great to meet one of God's chosen people. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a Jewish New York City lawyer. 
And he was speechless for a good 30, 40 seconds. <laughs> and he says, you know, I don't think I've ever heard that before. <laughs> and so he had That's the good. best punchline. Well, we got to move led, on. To t- we got to get Andy's, Andy's clip in here. I can't. I hate we don't have the time for, uh, completely yeah. that you want to have. Yeah, but. no worries. Um, so this is from Bruce Almighty. And, and Morgan Freeman is playing the God character, and Jim Carrey's playing Bruce. And they're meeting, uh, or they met... And Bruce has got a kind of a control freak. He's not getting the promotions and stuff he wants. And they meet. And when he comes into this building, he meets God as a boss. He's wearing different clothes and stuff, like a boss, electrician, and a janitor. And then God takes off. He had been kind of masquerading in that. Then he kind of shows him, hey, this that I'm God. And this is an exchange between them, and then I'll talk about it. Yeah, but I'll get around to it. You install the clapper? No, but catch a jingle, isn't it? <laughs> clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off, the clapper. <laughs> Just can't get it out of my head, man. Well, good luck with that. I'm gonna go now. Okay, but the boss will be right out. You must be Bruce. I've been expecting you. This is hilarious. So you're the boss and the electrician and the janitor. Must be a killer Christmas party. <laughs> Don't get drunk, though. One of you might need a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> you always were funny, Bruce. Just like your father. He didn't mind rolling up his sleeves either, son. People underestimate the benefit of good old manual labor. It's freedom in it. Some of the happiest people in the world go home smelling to high heavens at the end of the day. So you just hear there, one thing I like is I I noticed whenever I was doing the clip today is that, you know, Bruce, I mean, um, God says, you know, I like that, that your uh, sense of humor. It's like your father and, you know, the father that uh, doesn't mind rolling his up his sleeves. Well, he was really talking about himself. And we are, we're created in the image of God. I was thinking about that. We are really created in the image of God, and if we like to laugh, he likes to laugh, and he likes to laugh with us. So, been a great and show. And he even calls him son. So, yeah, go to MassInJourneyRadio.org. This is the Truth Network.